Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. Very enthusiastic about this video because it is a very easy, very like condensed step, simple eye look that could be your hip pocket go-to whenever you need something that you don't want to have to really strategize too much about and you just want a quick look, but not necessarily the quick look that equals supernatural, but the quick look that equals lifted. The whole shaping of this eyeshadow is not insanely dramatic, but it's definitely strategic in terms of lifting the outer part of the eye up. And I've worked with this technique before. It was actually brought to my mind mind in the video where I was working with viewer suggested techniques and somebody suggested, you know, instead of going light to dark, go dark to light with your sequence of shadows. And I've worked with that on and off from time to time. I even brought it into my very last video. And that was a pretty simple look, but I complicated things a little. And as that simmered in my mind a little bit, I thought I need to devote a whole video just to this technique because now I've got it to where it's just two shades, two brushes, just a few little easy steps. And as you see them carried out, you will understand why this is different from normal eyeshadow application. There's much less chance for error and over application. And also the way we handle a dark shade being applied, there's not going to be any fallout here either to worry about. And, and keep this in mind with this look. You, when you see people with eyeshadow on, we're not all looking at each other up at this distance, right? We might see somebody just kind of back a ways or across a room. And we don't necessarily know whether it was their eyeshadow, whether they had false lashes on, but we might be able to tell that that face looks a little lifted from a distance. And this is the kind of eyeshadow look that can do the work of false lashes in terms of the lifted eye, because lashes will almost always do that, right? They're coming upward, they're lifting your look, they're looking more dramatic, more maybe even cat-eyed at the outside. Here, our dark eyeshadow color is filling that void. And it's just kind of a great little substitution, cheater kind of technique to get that lifted effect that lashes can give, right? So again, two shadows, two brushes. I'm going to explain the heck out of this and my reasoning, but it can be done just like that. Two minutes for sure, no problem. But here is the whole technique. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so where the look stands right now, I've got my foundation, concealer, powder, bronzer, blush, highlight, my brows, my lip on, and also some eyeshadow primer. I would use that for any eye look, doesn't matter. This is Milani eyeshadow primer. We have a special relationship. And then what eyeshadow do you use? Honestly, anything would work. So long as one shade is at least a little bit darker than the other shade, you will have some contrast and you can work with anything. You can look in any palette and identify one deeper shade and one shade that's a little bit lighter or maybe a lot lighter and you can definitely make this work. Start pulling out drugstore singles, old quads, palettes that used to confuse you and just think about the light and dark or at least even medium and dark if you prefer. If you can kind of just identify that difference in tone, you're going to be set for this look. So today what I wanted to use was something that came in the mail just yesterday. I ordered some new Makeup Geek eyeshadows from the new rebrand, and I actually, I'd been sent an email about receiving the PR, I think shortly after Rhett was born, so that was when I was in full-on survival mode, so I missed that. Um, but I'm more than happy to support the brand with my own money, and this is what I got. This is the nine color palette. As you can see, it's just like an open palette, but I, I spaced the shadows a little bit to make it aesthetically pleasing, but this is like the recommended set of shades for brown eyes and I was swatching them yesterday and they are so soft and buttery and I just thought I want to work those into my look today. Like I said, anything would work. I would call these my dark shades. We even have a dark shimmer. We've got some medium shades. We've got a really light shade here. I'll probably use that to really show the pop that I'm talking about. But outside of your eyeshadow, the two brushes you need are something that's flat that's going to really lay down product exactly where you want it to go. This is my Sigma E60. Another great one is the e.l.f. flat eyeshadow brush. It's even flatter than that. And then um, my Sigma E25 will be the other one that I use. And this one, um, it could use a cleaning right now, but it's great for blending. It's a little bit pinched in here at the top of the ferrule, which ends up giving it a slight bit of width left to right, but it's not too big in comparison to my eye shape. It's just a really comfortable size. So you don't have to use these exact brushes, but think of something flat that gives you control and then something fluffier that's not too big 
for your eye shape, something that kind of fits your crease, but is not too small and precise and also not too big. We do wanna be able to really get in there and use that as our blending tool. But step one, we're gonna identify a dark shade that we wanna use here. And I'm gonna go with this plum right down here. This is the shade called um, Curfew, by the way. So I'm just gonna tap into that gently. I know it's very pigmented, so I won't need much. And I'm going to pat this on the outer part of my eyelid with this brush and I am going to really make sure that that shadow hits the crease because I think where the look is convincing and where it makes sense is that this shadow is radiating out from your crease. So if you've got kind of a heavy eye area where this part of your skin sort of droops down and covers your crease, I think you really still wanna make the effort to get shadow into that crease, okay? And then um, I like to flip the brush over. So we were patting like this. I'm flipping it and letting the shadow come up here. And here's where you can really, um, depending on the amount of space between your eye and your eyebrow, you can make this as dramatic or as subtle as you want. I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle for this look. And I'm gonna pull that shadow upward slightly and kind of a little bit upward in the direction of the end of my eyebrow. That's kind of my guide. So what we have here now is an unblended, just applied eyeshadow. And you can kind of see what this is gonna to amount to once we get to the blending part. It's going to give our eyes this outer lift. We're just patting it on the outer part of our eyelid. You could go as much as halfway in if you want to. I'm kind of uh, probably nearing halfway. We're patting, we're working it up into that crease and then flipping the brush to allow that shadow to come upward more. And the beautiful thing about a flat brush is that this is your control step. This is where you really, you know, anywhere that brush goes, that's where the shadow's going. There's no question about it. There's no like unusual movement. I'm just doing a little padding motion here. I mean, this would work for your cheapest matte dark eyeshadow all the way to something more expensive. But just think about your shape. Use the end of your eyebrow as your guide. Try not to dip down lower, of course, than your eye. That's not gonna give you a lift. And make sure that product really is getting wedged in the crease. Now we're going to switch to another brush. And this is my E25, like I was explaining before. We're gonna go right to that crease. And as I blend, I feel like the motion I'm taking is almost like a little bit of a small circular motion. And we are not only going over what we applied, but we're gonna go inward too. And the interesting thing that's gonna happen here is that some of that shadow that was put in that outer corner crease area is now gonna gently work its way in. And it's not gonna look too dark in here because that's not where it was initially applied. Where the shadow gets first put down, that's where it's gonna stay the darkest. But you're able to travel with some of that inward. And it's not got the risk of me saying, okay, I'm gonna go to my crease boop, let me go into this dark shade and just go to town. Then you run a little bit more of the risk of over application and things getting, you know, maybe not quite so nicely blended, especially if you're a beginner. We're tapping into what was already on our skin and we're just using this brush that I did not apply any shadow to. And we're just going to it and circular motions, let it come inward as far as you wanna go, let it come outward too. You're just sort of treating that brush as like a little buffer. And look at how beautifully blended we've got that now. And we can do the same thing over here. These are powder shadows, even on top of a primer. They're not completely immobile. You know, we are moving that color across the eye. We're working in a circular motion here and we're pulling it through the crease. And really good deeper mattes will show themselves off beautifully in this way because look at how that shade where it's more concentrated, you see more plum as it shears out, it takes on a little bit different look. I love to see that. And also don't neglect your edge where we did first kind of apply that, start stamping it upward. Make sure to go over that. If at this point you'd even like to bring in a fluffy bare brush that's even fluffier than this or just something that has zero product on it and you wanna go over it, you can. I'm just trying to keep it extra simple and confined to just two brushes. 
but what we've got right now is one matte shadow, a beautiful blend, it's all above the eye and it's lifting up. And I've said it before when I've done a look like this, but I could practically stop here. This looks finished enough for me. It's almost as though a nude shadow is on my lid in contrast with this darker shade. But we're gonna give a light pop. I'm dying to use this shade here. This is the color called Daydreamer. So I'm gonna dab into that with my flat brush, going back to the flat brush, and we're just gonna pat this on. Oh, that's really pretty. Patting it on the open area where nothing else was. And I would say concentrate your first, your initial like dab on here more toward the inside. So as your brush gets less and less on it, it can more seamlessly merge over the top of um, the matte shadow. So starting kind of right in here, dab, dab, dab. And guys, it's really just that easy. Like obviously there are many different additional steps one could take. You could take, you know, mid-tones and continue to buff over the crease. You could put in a couple of light shades instead of just one. You could smoke it out and go completely under the eye. But for the simplest lifted eye, this is what I'm talking about. You've used a dark shade that's coming upward from the eye like this. You've taken the time to get it fully blended out and then give yourself this pop on the the lid and that keep in mind could range anywhere from being a real pop to just really any shade in here honestly you could go with this color and keep it closer to the plum and not go as light and bright also do your thing with eyeliner mascara lashes whatever you want to do I'm simply gonna finish this look by curling my lashes and applying my superhero mascara and I'll be right back so the mascara is on that's kind of the simplest way to accessorize this look but really a false lash would definitely add to the lifted look a winged out liner that's really pulled up. And if you want to go below the eye with anything, by all means, you know, shadow mascara, but it does drag the eye down a little bit more. And if you're trying to achieve that soft lift, I think the shadow on top is kind of the way to go. But I hope this was helpful to you guys. It's a really simple technique, but I was trying to break it down as fully as I could. I was noticing sort of a request out there at times for some more real teaching tutorials, some things that are really described in depth. So somebody who wants wants to enter into this who really has no familiarity with the process could do it. So hopefully I did that today. Um, thank you so much for your time. I feel like for me, you're going to start seeing some variations maybe on this look in different other videos. Maybe we can take it a slightly more dramatic direction. You can see what it looks like with an extra step or two added in, but I think this is the most basic. This is really what I wanted to focus on. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.